Today's movie is a sci-fi horror import from Russia titled Sputnik. In this movie, which takes place in the Soviet Union in 1983, a couple of cosmonauts crash onto Earth after their vessel malfunctions. One dies and the other, a man named Valery, is inexplicably alive. It turns out that there is an organism living inside him. Wait, I thought we already had our alien ripoff for the year. That exits through his body through his mouth for a short time every night. The Soviet government summons a doctor named Tatiana to fix this situation. But as the situation gets progressively more complicated, Tatiana becomes faced with an ethical dilemma with no easy answer. Sputnik got some pretty good reviews from the critics, and for a while I was in agreement. The movie had a very procedural, low-key way of telling the story that set itself apart from the other alien ripoffs in the universe. Aside from an overly bombastic musical score that sounded like something Hans Zimmer would make for one of Christopher Nolan's movies, it was a quieter and more down-to-earth take on the genre. But as the movie went along, things started making less sense, and the whole affair became less like a rival, and more like life. Like life. Like life. And at this point, I need to get into spoilers. Spoiler alert. Okay, here we go. It won't surprise you to learn that the Soviet government has a sinister hidden agenda. Here's where it all started getting confusing. The colonel, who runs this whole operation, says that he plans to weaponize the alien, and this confuses me for a great many reasons. Let's list them. 1. You only have one of these aliens. If they reproduce, we don't know how. How do you plan to get more to fight in your wars? Two. The creature, while dangerous, is not indestructible. It even gets horribly wounded at the end. How is it supposed to stand up to modern weaponry? 3. The creature needs a human host in order to survive. You'll be killing other soldiers when it comes out, but at the expense of the health and safety of your own men. 4. Guys, it's essentially a wild animal. You can't control it. It's going to attack everything in sight and not follow orders. You can try to train it, but is it really worth it? No. End of story. Well. Four reasons. I guess that counts as a great many if you're just learning your numbers. Once you learn more about the situation, you realize that the colonel bringing Tatiana in his secret government lab to study the infected cosmonaut was a really stupid idea. He tells her they chose her specifically basically because she's a loose cannon who thinks for herself and can bring a unique perspective on the situation. That's all well and good, but the people in the lab are engaged in morally repugnant behavior and literally killing people. If they had to bring someone in, it should have been someone with an unquestioning loyalty, and not this tough slash fearless free-spirited person. As the movie goes on, you like Valeri the Cosmonaut less and less. He knows more than he initially lets on, but doesn't do anything to warn Tatiana or stop the madness. When the whole emotional stakes of the movie are in whether he lives or dies, this is a problem. I really didn't care. Overall, I liked this movie better when it was a low-key sci-fi medical thriller. When it turns into a prison break film in the second half, I lost interest as the nonsensical plot twists added up. The monster is quite scary scary when you first see it, but the impact is lessened every time you see it. In the end, it was a good effort, but not good enough for anything above a 5 out of 10. Cool poster, though.